Hi everyone and welcome to another case study on SQL. So in this video, we are going to solve case study number 2 that is Pizza Runner under 8 week SQL challenge by Danny Ma. Okay. So if you are not aware of the context, I would recommend that you watch our first SQL portfolio project where we solved a case study that revolves around uh, Danny Ma's you know, taste of success that is called as Danny's Diner. So if this is all confusing to you, let me just give you a quick context. context. So if you go to 8weeksqlchallenge.com, uh, this is developed by Danny Ma and uh, it's a series under data with Danny. And this has a lot of case studies which you can solve to learn SQL in a better manner. Now the first case study was Danny's Diner which is already solved in one of our videos. If you go to our videos page and access this particular video, you can watch it fully. If you want to watch it section by section, that is also available under our playlist. All right. So if I just go back today, we are going to solve the first part of this case study number two, that is pizza runner. Now, let me give you some context of this case study. All right. So, the tool that we will use to answer the SQL queries is SQL Server Management Studio. You can use any SQL editor of your choice. That doesn't matter. Only the queries may differ here and there based on the uh, particular syntax of that tool that you are using. All right. Now, going back, this is the case study for you. Okay. Don't worry, I will leave the link as well as all the details to create the tables and, you know, uh, all the details in order to view the schema and all of that in the description. Okay. Now, if you come to this case study, uh, there is a quick introduction about the case study. Okay. So, it tells you uh, what this case study is all about and what is the context. Then it comes to the data, which is uh, the relevant part for us. I mean, uh, this is what we will use to solve the questions that comes in the case study. And if you just scroll down, you have your table descriptions. Okay. So there are multiple tables. I'll explain the tables as well. And then there are, there is a code which you can just copy and paste into your uh, editor to uh, create the tables and insert data into the tables. Okay. Now comes the actual part of the case study where you have case study questions. Okay. So there are a lot of questions in this case study and what we are going to do is this case study is actually divided into these sections. Okay. So in this particular video, I'll solve the first part and then subsequent videos will cover the next part as well. Okay. Scrolling down. So these are the first 10 questions that we'll solve today under PISA matrix. All right. You can use any editor of your choice as I said. Now let me just go back. So just to give you an idea of the schema, this is the schema. All right. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six tables in total and the tables are related to each other in one or the other way. There are some primary keys like order ID, runner ID, foreign keys as well, pizza ID. Okay. And this is how the tables are related. We will view how the tables are related in the short while. Let me just come to, yeah. So these are the tables, okay. So this gives you a short description of how the tables look like, okay. What each of these, uh, each of these columns mean. So for example, in customer order table, the pizza ID refers to the type of pizza which was ordered, okay. And there is a, yeah, this is the table. Let me. Uh, quickly uh, take you through this table. So you have the order IDs, then you have customer ID. Now notice one thing, you have the same customer making two different orders. So that is possible. And the same customer making two different orders and ordering the same pizza in these two different orders. So that is also possible. Okay. Now there are in customer ID, you can find uh, the same customer ordering multiple times. Then you have the pizza ID. So pizza ID 1, 2, 3, etc. is related to another table which, which is your pizza names. Okay. So you have 1 and 2. So pizza 1 is meat lovers and pizza 2 is vegetarian. 
coming back then you have something called as exclusions and extras so exclusions are nothing but you know if you have instructed uh, you know in the order that you want to exclude number four so what is exclusion number four let's see let me go down and there you have it so exclusion number four is nothing but a topping which is excluded okay so four here stands for cheese so if somebody has excluded in exclusions it says four that means they don't want cheese with this particular pizza okay in this order all right then you have extras if they want something extra from the topic they will add it here all right so if there are multiple toppings it says one comma five this is how it is incorporated in the table and at last you have your order time with the date of the order and the actual time of the order all right now you will notice there are some blank entries and there are some not a number or null entries as well i will first show you how to handle those entries as well because uh, in the instructions also if i just scroll down here it says before you start writing your SQL queries, you might want to investigate the data. You may want to do something with some of those null values and data types in the customer order and runner orders table. Okay. So these two tables have a lot of, uh, you know, null entries and uh, what to say blank entries. For example, you see the runner table. So the runner is no one but the, <coughs> excuse me, runner is nobody but uh, the delivery person okay so you have the id of the delivery person runner id and the order id that the runner has picked up then you have the pickup time okay this is the distance that's that the you know runner will cover delivering this order and the duration it takes okay now one more thing to notice here is you can see the distance column has null entries as well as some distorted entries for example if you notice the first entry is 20 km okay then you have another entry let's say uh, this one 23.4 space km so here the formatting is a bit uh, you know uh, messed up because this is not organized properly right so you have kilometer appearing uh, with a space in between without a space in between and there are some entries which do not have a kilometer mentioned for example 23.4 and 10 all right so we will uh, make it a bit standard before we start writing our queries similarly for duration if you see uh, in duration you have minutes okay then you have mins mins you don't have anything written next to some numbers you don't have any space before mins okay then you have minute without an s okay so all these things will be taken care of and at the end there is a cancellation column which says whether the order was cancelled or not so it says restaurant cancellation so this order that is order id 7 was actually order id 6 was actually cancelled by the restaurant okay and order id 9 if you see was cancelled by customer customer cancellation so these things uh, these are some things that you have to keep in mind but you will get a fair idea when you look at the schema and I will show you how the tables look like when we run the select statements. So this is the uh, actual uh, pizza runner case study that we will solve today. All right. Let me just jump right into our uh, editor and show you how to do this. Now the first thing you have to do is create the table, insert data into those tables. So create table statements and inserting data statements for all of these tables are uh, mentioned here. I will put the link to access this particular code in the description of this video you can check that out so once you're here so till here it's all already given all right next is where we will look at the tables so let's look at the first table that is customer orders so you just run select star from customer orders this is your table all right now you may see that I have actually cleaned up the data, okay, uh, so that we save time and you know answer our queries better. But I will show you how the data cleaning steps look like, okay. Let me just hide this, okay. 
So these are the statements for you to view the actual tables. Uh, I'm sure you are already aware of this if you have already solved the previous uh, case study. If not, please go check it out. It will give you a, a, a holistic view of how you start from the very beginning. Okay. Now, let's look at how to clean this data. Okay. So, let me show you the first table that is our customer orders table. Okay. So, this is the first table customer orders. And the first thing that we will do is we will make it null wherever the string null or blank appears. Okay. So, if you notice in this particular table, there are a lot of blanks. For example, in exclusions and extras, there are a lot of blank entries as well as some null written here. All right. Then you have NAN. Uh, but actually, if you run the table, you may find it as null and the capital null, NULL. So, capital null is nothing but uh, absence of a value. Okay. This small uh, null that is NULL in lower case can mean null in some cases that is absence of a value or it can also be a string. Okay. That is NULL uh, double quotes as a, uh, written as a string. Okay. So, to make it standard, what we are going to do is we, we will make it NULL, that is capital NULL, wherever uh, string null or any blank entry appears. Okay, so how do you do that? I have written down the code for data cleaning right here so that we don't uh, take up a lot of time answering, uh, you know, our questions in the video. So, this is the first thing you can do. You can use this query that is it's a pretty straightforward query. You, you can update customer orders table and you can set the extras column equals null. Okay. And we are giving a condition here which says where extras equals in single quotes no value. So this uh, denotes your blank spaces. So any blank spaces will be covered by this query. Or if it is not a blank query, it, it will be a null in in single quotes that is it's a string all right so if you use this query what happens is wherever a blank or a null appears that will be changed to capital null that is uh, completely null that is absence of a value okay it will be uh, converted to that format similarly you do it for exclusions as well now there are two ways you can do it so for example instead of putting an or every time you can use something like this, the in operator, okay. If exclusions in, that is null comma blank, what it means is, if in exclusions there is a null or a blank, it will automatically, uh, you know, take that into consideration and set the exclusions equals null. So, these two statements, that is where extras equals or extras equals null or where exclusions in, these both these both the statements work the same way okay so you can use any format of it all right so extras are done exclusions are done second is in the runners table if you noticed there are kilometer entries and minutes entries as i discussed right so there are some for example km in distance column there are km entries okay km 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 everywhere so, it, what it means is every data here is in kilometers except the null values obviously and every data and duration is in minutes, correct. So, instead of keeping this km, space km or minutes, min, minute, etc. We can just keep the numbers. What do you think, right? So, that it's, it will be easier for us when we actually uh, query the database, okay. It will make it standard. And what it will also help us in doing is, uh, so now if you notice these columns, right, distance and duration, these are actually varchar. These are of the type text, character types, okay, variable characters. Now, when we remove km and minutes and convert it into integer types or float types, it will actually improve the uh, speed of our execution. So, when you query uh, the database or the table, what will happen is instead of taking, let's say, just for an example, instead of taking, let's say, 10 microseconds, it will take 5 microseconds when you convert it to an int. Okay. 
So that's where, what we are doing here. So kilometer and minutes, remove the strings and just keep the number since all are same values. Later, we can transform it to int or float type. So now we update it again. So update runner orders, set distance equals trim. Okay. And you replace distance wherever kilometer appears with a blank. That is what we are doing. So with this query, what we are doing is you use the replace uh, function. In replace, you use the column name uh, separated by what string do you want to replace. So I want to replace wherever kilometer appears or km appears with a blank string. Now, once this is done, that is this part is done. Obviously, there are some cases where you uh, where you have seen, for example, 23.4 space kilometer. Okay, there is a space in between. I don't want the space. So what do I do? I can use a trim. So any leading or trailing spaces will be removed using trim. Okay, so you use replace and then trim it and set it to distance. So what happens is. At the end of it, any kilometer will be replaced by an empty string and if there is any additional space, that will be removed by the trim. Okay. So that is done. Similarly, you do it for, uh, you know, any null values. Now, if you have any string null values written, you can move it to null. Okay. Change it to null. Similarly, for pickup time, pickup time, I think there are only null values. So you just change to the actual null instead of the string null okay and also cancellation you can set it to null if since uh, there may be some blank values yeah see some blank and some not a number values so nan stands for not a number okay you can all you can change all of this just keep the string intact here and rest of it you can change it to null okay so wherever null or a blank appears you change it to null yeah so i hope this is uh, making sense to you if there are any queries at all please post it on the comments so that uh, i can answer it for you the next thing we'll do is we'll update the duration column to remove text parts and any extra spaces and update the text null to null okay so why duration duration see in duration we have minutes then we have mins then we have just a number then we have space minute okay so multiple types of uh, strings are appearing here okay so we don't want any string or text character to appear we just want the numbers to appear here so for that you can use a pretty interesting formula here what you can do is uh, just like before you can update runner orders set duration equals now we'll use a condition okay so why condition because there are multiple, uh, you know, multiple scenarios happening here. So for each of the conditions, we'll tackle it. So the first condition obviously will be, what will be the first condition? If, if something is null, you change it to capital null. Okay. That is absence of a value. Now, if somewhere you find a text, you remove that text. Just keep the number. That is your second condition. And if you don't find a string, you just keep the number. Okay, that is the third condition or third check to check to be performed. So we say case that is how we begin a, begin a you know, conditional statement in SQL, and then you say when. So this is where you are defining the condition. Okay, so when is numeric left of duration comma one? Okay, so this particular uh, line, what it does is it checks whether the left the first character this is the one that is the first character from the left of duration okay so what is the duration column 32 minutes let's say let's take this as an example okay so first character that is three so it checks for three okay what does it check it checks whether it is numeric or not okay so if it is numeric so usually how this works is if it is numeric it will give you a 1. If it is not numeric, let's say instead of 3, it was a letter K or even letter M that was starting here. So what that will do is, it will give you a 0. Alright, so that's the condition we are checking. So we are checking the first character of 
the duration column okay that is left first character of the duration column it says is numeric equals 1 so it will check whether it is numeric or not it is correct right it is numeric equals 1 so then it moves to the next uh, line it says then so what if it is numeric if it is numeric then what we check is left of duration okay so again we start from the left of duration and what we do is there is this uh, function called pat index okay so what this does is it actually checks for the first occurrence of a non numeric character all right so first occurrence of a non numeric character now you can use this particular uh, you know pattern to check that first occurrence of a non numeric character okay so it checks when is the first non numeric character coming in so then first non numeric character is coming in as a space here actually okay or in this case let's say in this case it is a letter which is m all right so it checks for that and we add a t to the end now this is added so that let's say in this case 40 okay 40 we are actually adding a t to the end so that in any scenario it detects a character okay so that the uh, the statement can be executed and what it does at the end is it removes one character from the uh, wherever it is found for example if it finds uh, let's say 25 mins okay so what that pat index function will do is it will it will give you m and then you have a minus 1 at the end so it will take the control back to 5 so it will come back to 5 okay so basically what it will return is it will return just the numeric part of it ignoring all the text that appears okay that's how we are removing the uh, letters from this particular uh, column else null if none of these conditions are satisfied you just return null for example this case okay here there are no numeric characters to be found so you just return the capital null here and you just end it with an end this is how you end a case statement okay so this is your statement to uh, update your uh, you know duration column and remove the minutes from it scrolling down at the end what we want to do is the distance call distance column and duration column we want to change the data type so that it is easier for us to query now in distance you see there is 23.4 there is in 23.4 13.4 so this we can keep as a float data type so you just say it, alter table the table name and alter column the name of the column which you want to alter and the data type the new data type that you want to input and then you uh, convert the duration column and duration can be integer so this is how you can update it now the data cleaning part is totally complete this is how you clean the data it's a very important process in data analytics and if you're working as a data analyst business analyst any sort of analyst uh, this particular step or, or you know all the steps that we took so far are crucial part of data cleaning all right uh, now this is just a stored procedure in uh, sql server that you can use to view the data types or you know the description of the table all right so i think in uh, other for example mysql or postgres you can describe a table simply similarly you can use uh, th these statements to uh, execute a stored procedure help on a particular table okay now it shows for customer orders you can see the type okay you have var care var care then you have date time integer now we changed uh, now we recently changed runner orders so let's see all right so runner order we have changed distance to float now and duration to integer okay so initially it was var care just like pickup time later we changed it to float and integer okay so that's about your data cleaning now let's get right into uh, the questions and try solving each of the questions one by one okay 
for your convenience what i have done is uh, i have just actually taken a screenshot of all the tables and put it in a whiteboard here i'm using microsoft whiteboard it makes things easier for me when i am explaining any videos so you you have the customer order table here your pizza names pizza recipe toppings runners and runner orders these are the two main tables from which we will extract the data okay and the one that you see here is how it will look once you have cleaned up your data okay so we have introduced all the null values all the jargons are removed and here we have removed all the minutes and kilometers and this is how in the end it will appear okay so let's get started and start solving our queries so the first question is how many pizzas were ordered all right let's look at our table so our table says order id customer id pizza id so in order to get how many pizzas were ordered uh, i think you can just take the count of the rows from the customer orders right because it's only asking for pizzas that were ordered in runner orders you have a couple of order ids that were cancelled but that doesn't matter because uh, end of the day you are just being asked the ordered count right so the question says how many always remember uh, whenever you are answering any sql question uh, look at the question very deeply okay so how many directly gives you an idea that uh, you know you just need to find the number okay the total number of uh, pizzas that were ordered nothing else if you want to detail your answer you do it but at end of the day you should know that you are basically giving a count here okay so with that said let me let me answer this so it will be select and then you can say count okay count star so count star will give you the uh, count of the number of uh, actual rows since each row is uh, you know unique you can take count star here okay count star from what is the table name customer orders okay customer orders select this execute it and there you go the count is 1 4 that is 14 okay now i have not given any name to this column that's why it says no column name if you want you can uh, you know give it an alias using the keyword as as and you can say uh, pizzas underscore ordered all right let me run it now sorry not here you have to give it right after the column that you just created okay select star as pizzas ordered execute it and it will come as pizzas ordered 14 all right now if you uh, if you want you can also uh, let's say count the count some other column let's say pizza id okay or customer id but that doesn't uh, what makes more sense is let's say pizza id or count star okay so if you do a pizza id let's say it will give you the same value 14 okay so that basically tells you that uh, you are taking a count of each instance of that order okay so remember that this is the uh, answer to the first query you can use star or is id doesn't matter moving on to the next question it says how many unique customer orders were made so when the term unique comes in always remember you know there is some possibility of using a distinct statement or a distinct keyword okay so it's a very straightforward query you have to say select count of now it says how many unique customer orders okay so unique customer orders are nothing but i'll say distinct order id okay so these are my unique customer orders from our table which is customer orders okay let's let's run this query and the answer is 10 now again if you want to name the column you can do it uh, like this unique 
unique customer orders okay execute unique customer orders were 10 if you want to validate it you can go back to your uh, table and you can see uh, for example unique customer orders right so unique customer orders are uh, taken from the order id so for example 101 customer ordered let me just zoom it a little okay for example order uh, number one and two were made by customer 101 as well as order number six okay uh, let me show you this so order number 101 okay it is this order this order and this order were made by customer 101 so there are one two three orders three unique orders made by customer 101 okay then you have uh, 102 102 which are uh, nothing but four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen okay so this 14 is your previous uh, particular query okay so how many pieces in total these many pieces uh my bad we were taking order id so let me just remove all this okay so we were actually taking order ids so customer 101 ordered two pizzas okay so this I just hold on count of distinct order ids okay so this is one order id two order ids these will be counted as one okay so you have three order ids these will be counted as one one two three four five six seven eight nine and these will be counted as one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there are ten orders distinct orders made by the customers okay so that's your answer to the second question now moving on to the third question how many successful orders were delivered by each runner so see there are some keywords here one is successful orders okay delivered by each runner that means you have to answer this query for each runner if you go back to the runner table go, let's look at the uh, runner table okay so runner runner id 1 2 3 2 2 1 okay so there are three runners okay that is 1 2 3 uh, run 4 is not mentioned here he's there in the runners table but not in the runner orders okay so 1 2 and 3 three runners are mentioned in the runner orders orders table for each of these runners we want to find you know how many successful orders were delivered now you have to define what is a successful order or you know what is a successful order an order which is delivered okay so delivered and successful order are both the same by each runner so on the left we want to have on in one column we want to have the runner ids that is one two and three and on the other side we want to have the count of orders that were delivered now how do you uh, you know how do you know when an order is delivered what what factor tells you that an order is delivered so look at this table runner orders okay it has the order id runner id pickup time distance duration and then cancellation so see there are multiple ways you can check whether an order is delivered or not the first one is if you look at the pickup time in the pickup time every order that has a pickup time is not cancelled if you see See, the cancellation is for two orders and which are those two orders where there is no pickup time. So, whenever the pickup time is null or, or I can say whenever the pickup time is not null, it means, let me just show you, whenever the pickup time, that is this particular column, it is not null, okay? It is not null 
that means the order was successfully delivered similarly you can also take cancellation so whenever cancellation is null that means the order is successfully delivered correct either pickup time is not null or cancellation is null that means the order is successfully delivered and if you want you can also take distance and duration but that will again complicate your query but you know you can choose any of these four uh, columns to determine whether the order was delivered or not so i am going to choose cancellation but feel free to use pickup time distance or duration uh, you know based on your convenience all right if you are using pickup time distance or duration make sure in the, in the condition whenever you are, you are using the where clause just mention where pickup time is not null that means the order is delivered but i am going to use cancellation so i am going to say when cancellation is null order is successfully delivered okay so let's see how we can write this query so the first thing that we will need is obviously the runner id okay what else do we need we also need the count of what do we need we need the count of order id okay that's how we will we will determine whether the order was delivered or not and let's name this as uh, successful order okay or successful orders now from which table are we taking it from runner orders all right and what is the condition for a successful order condition is the condition that i am using is where cancellation is null okay if you are using some other uh, column just make sure you put it as not null if it is pickup duration or distance all right now one thing to notice is since you are using a condition and you are using a aggregate uh, along with another column you have to use the group by statement okay and group by the column that you are not using an aggregate function on so i am not using an aggregate function on runner id so i'll group it by runner id or to make it make more sense always group by something that you want to answer okay so in this case i want to have each runner okay so i need data for each runner that's why i'm grouping by each runner okay that is group by runner id now let's see if this works or not so i'm going to execute okay there you go so it says runner id 1 2 3 because runner id 4 has not delivered anything successful orders are 4 3 and 1 all right 4 plus 3 uh, 7 plus 1 8 so it says there were eight successful orders let's see let's validate it so you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. There, you have 10 orders here that was uh, you know uh, that were unique customer orders again this was again 10 so you have 10 orders here and out of this you have two cancellations cancellation number one cancellation number two okay so if you remove these two orders you have one two three four five six seven eight so in total you will have eight orders okay so that's what this uh, particular thing means let me just remove all of this okay let me just go back i think that's better yeah okay so this is what the query was about all right cool so coming back this was your answer for the third question i hope you are following along if you are if you want to follow along uh, set it up set up your editor and everything uh, and uh, pause the video come back and solve these questions along with me you can pause the question solve it and uh, look at the answer if it is right or wrong that's a good way to learn okay now looking at the fourth question the fourth question says how many of each type of pizza was delivered so it wants to uh, you know find out how many of each type of pizza was delivered so let's see how many types of pizzas are there there are two types of pizzas one is meat lovers and one is vegetarian okay so you have to find out how many that is the count okay of each of these types was delivered okay so delivered is a keyword here how many is a keyword here so how many will tell you that you have to find the count 
delivered will tell here what the condition is so delivered condition is what where cancellation is now this is the condition for deli delivered okay and each type of pizza each type of pizza is nothing but meat lovers and uh, veg lovers i think vegetarian okay so let's start the query so i'll start with the pizza names first okay that's what we want on our uh, what to say on our left side right let me yeah okay let me make it clear okay so the first one that we want is we want the name of the pizza so i'd say pizza dot name sorry uh, pizza underscore name that is the name of the column what else do we want we want the number of orders so we'll say count of order id all right what else do we want that's all right so we want the name of the pizza and we want the number of uh, i mean how many of each of them were delivered so delivered comes in the condition so only these two columns and we want it from uh, two places because uh, if you notice we want to have pizza name okay which has the pizza id and we want to have the count of order id so the count of order id comes from the runners table because we will use the runners table to determine whether the order was delivered or not okay so instead of going to customer orders we can directly uh, you know use these two tables but the problem here is you will have to actually use the customer orders table as well you know why the reason is pizza id is not directly available in runner orders you see this pizza id column 1 2 this is not available in runner orders it's only available in customer orders so you will have to actually combine these three tables customer orders runner orders and pizza name to find out the pizza names okay let me show you how to do that so you can say from runner orders okay and we will name this as ro okay so that it's easier to use so i'll say uh, okay i'll say ro and i want to join the customer orders table okay and i will call it as co okay so you can do it this way as well as ro and as co but i prefer to just remove the as keyword and this also works okay now what is the condition on which we are joining this so we are doing a left join and the condition for the join is ro dot order id is equal to co dot order id correct then what we are going to do is we are going to join the pizza names table and i am going to name this as pn okay and what is the condition for joining pizza names we have pn dot pn dot pizza id equals customer order dot pizza id correct or not so you you have actually linked pizza id with the other two tables now okay now we go ahead and enter our condition where cancellation is null so where cancellation is null means order successfully delivered correct okay so you can use two uh, hyphens to uh, start a new comment a single line comment if you want a multi multi line comment you can use a you know you can use something like this okay and anything you enter in between this will be marked as a comment okay this is a multi line comment okay just for the sake of showing this okay Uh, let me remove this also you already know that this is the condition so where uh, cancellation is null what else do we need see we are using a count here so we will use a group by group by what uh, we want to group it by the name of the pizza okay so for each pizza you name want it right so we'll use pn dot pizza name and here also we'll use pn dot pizza name okay 
it shows an error here well, that's because we have to use the name of the table along because you will have order id in runners table as well as customer order table okay so i've used this let me name this as delivered pizzas delivered okay let's see if this works or not execute it okay so it says pizza's name and uh, pizza's delivered all right 9 10 11 12 all right so let's validate it uh, nine meat lovers and three vegetarian pizzas okay all right all right all right got it see uh, you may be confused here because 9 plus 3 is uh, 11 and 9 plus 3 is 12 and uh, the actual delivered uh, orders were 10 you remember actual delivered orders if i just go back uh, actual delivered orders here were yeah actual delivered orders or you know unique orders were 10 okay so if unique orders were 10 how come uh, there were 11 pizzas you know how come there were sorry not 11 12 9 10 11 12 12 pizzas uh, delivered that's because in each order if you come back here in each order you can see uh, there are uh, you know there could be more than one pizza okay so for each order see order id 3 3 pizza id 1 and 2 so there were actually two pizzas order in the same order id yeah that's why it is uh, the, the actual count of orders in this particular pizza is more than the your more than your unique orders okay so count of pizza and uh, count of orders is totally different i hope you understand all right uh, if you are using uh, just one note here uh, that you know a pizza name right this pizza name column this particular column right pizza name it was actually uh, of type text okay so in uh, sql server management studio or sql server initially uh, what we used to do was we used to use the text formatting but now that is uh, depreciated and uh, after depre uh, deprecation we use the varchar varchar max so what you can do is you can uh, use a a very short query that can help you change the data type you can use falter table and just say the table name pizza names okay and then you can say alter column pizza names okay that is the name of the sorry pizza name that is the name of the column and you change it to max okay so if you use this particular query it will help you uh, change the type of the text in case you are getting any error while you are running this particular query okay if you are not getting any errors you are getting the output that's fine if you are getting an error that's because uh, the pizza name column is of type text you need to change it to type var care okay you can use this particular query I'm just commenting it out all right let's move on to the next question that is question number five how many vegetarians and meat lovers were ordered by each customer okay that's the next question so each customer means you need customer ids one by one and vegetarian and meat lover pizzas one by one okay now let's see So you start with select customer ID, okay. Then you want the pizza name. What else do you want? So want the count of order ID, and we name it as pizzas delivered, okay. Or we can say 
is a ordered actually so we just want the ordered not the delivered uh, count all right so i'll use the same aliases as before co.customer id pn.pizza name and co.order id okay you have to specify the table uh, because that's why these errors are coming up so i'll say customer orders name it as co and i'll join the pizza names table use the alias pn okay what is the condition on co or i can say on pizza id equals co dot pizza id all right so it's just asking us for uh, ordered you know ordered numbers since we are using a count we'll say group by uh, we'll group it by how many vegetarian meat lovers were ordered by each customer so you will have a customer id and then you can say whether it's vegetarian or meat lover so let's group it by pizza name comma customer id both okay since we want it uh, one by one now let me just go ahead and run this execute there you go so you have customer id so customer id 101 meat lovers two pizzas order 101 vegetarian one pizza order 102 so you have customer ids here okay and for each customer id there is uh, you know the pizzas they have ordered so for example 104 only ordered meat lovers and the count was three okay so that's a pretty straightforward query moving on to the next one okay so here you have to find the maximum number of pizzas delivered in a single order now just think about it okay maximum number of pizzas delivered in a single order for that what you can first find out is find out the uh, the count of pizza okay that is count of pizzas delivered in each order so on the left you know have a column which will give you the order id okay and uh, on the right have the count of pizzas that were delivered in each order and then you can find out the maximum number of pizzas that were delivered out of this particular table okay so you can use a cte here okay a common table expression or you can just directly use a sub query so let me show you how to do this so first we will find out as i said let's find out the uh, order id and next to that we will find out the count of pizza id okay and i'll say from which table i want it i want it from customer orders name it as ceo join it with runner orders now the reason why we are doing this is because pizza id and customer uh, i mean the delivered count of pizzas are only available in runner orders okay that's why we are using the runner order table as well so we'll join this and our condition for deliver ordered word was cancellation is null all right and we group it by what do we group it by we group it by the order id okay now let's run this and see what we get okay so you have the order ids and the pizzas delivered in each order okay so from this table itself you can see row number four that is for order id four there were three pizzas delivered and the question is what was the maximum number of pizzas delivered in a single order so in a single order order number four we had three pizzas so we want this three out of this particular column how do you get it you can simply use a uh, max statement okay so you can say select 
max of what? I want a max of pizzas delivered, right? You can say max of pizzas delivered. And how do I want to name it? I will name it as max pizzas uh, in single order. Okay, that's the name of the column. And I want it from where? From this particular this entire query becomes my subquery now okay subquery and i have to name the subquery so i can say pizzas per order is the name of this subquery so we executed this first and we got this table and from this table we are just simply finding the max of pizzas delivered so it should ideally give us uh, three as the result and this should be the name of our new column so let's try to run it and there you go three okay so that's how you have to break down the query so before you find the maximum uh, check from where do you want to want where you have to find the maximum out of okay so define the table uh, initial data first and then from there there you can find out the maximum okay so that was our uh, sixth question let's move on to our seventh question okay now the question is for each customer how many delivered pizzas had at least one change and how many had no change and i have just made a note here so change here implies either an exclusion or an extra okay if there is an extra or for example see if uh, there is an extra for example order number four or already four okay so if there is an exclusion it means there was a change Although there is no extra, it still was there was a change. Okay. Similarly, uh, if there is null null in extras both, extras and exclusion, that means there was no change. Okay. So that's what we have to find out. How do we go about it? So it's a pretty interesting query to be honest. What you can do is let me start with a uh, let me start with selecting the customer ID. Okay because it says for each customer right so we will anyways have to find out the customer id and then let me take a count of the pizza ids i'll tell you why pizza id and let's name it as pizzas delivered now pizza id i'm taking the count because it explicitly says how many delivered pizzas okay so for each of the customer how many delivered pizzas had at least one change so delivered pizza how do you find out you have to check the pizza id for that okay now since we are using the delivered uh, you know count as well what we can do is we can also include the runner order table because that uh, you know captures the delivered pizzas i will tackle the uh, you know change or not no change shortly before that let me just route, write down my table names and everything so i have my customer orders which i have named as ceo then i'm joining the runner order table because we have to find out whether it was delivered or not and uh, id should be ro.order id okay so by now you should be familiar with what i'm doing here and where cancellation is null because the pizzas were delivered okay and at the end i'll have to use a group by because i'm using a count here and what i want to group by is customer id because i wanted to find it for each customer okay now let's uh, do a condition here okay condition because uh, we have to say if there was change or no change okay so when does a change come so let's uh, tackle the at least one change thing okay so where there is at least one change so when so let's say case when okay so i'll use like this okay case when when the exclusion is not null okay or when extras is not null 
that is the condition right so if your exclusion or your extras that is exclusion is not null that is this case okay not null or extras is not null all right so it will check for this if this is not null that means there was a change if this is not null there was a change so either of the conditions can be uh, captured okay what it means then then what we want we don't want a statement so we want to say how many delivered pizzas had at least one change so for example the way it will come out is on your left you will have your customer id okay one column and then you will have your uh, you will have your uh, delivered pizzas so for example customer id 101 had five delivered pizzas and then out of those five delivered pizzas how many had one change and how many had no change so let's say three and then two so you will have four columns in total so these are our two columns okay then i am defining the third column and i'll say because we want a count i'll use one and if there is nothing then use zero and we'll end it okay and what will we do we'll end it and we will name this as at least one change make sense and similarly what i will do is comma so now i'm defining the fourth column that is when exclusions is null and this is very important okay extras is null when both are null okay exclusion and extra both are null together then i say one l zero one because i am counting that there was no change in these pizzas all right and then end and i'll name this as no change all right so i got it so remember one thing i'm using these one and zeros so that i can sum it up so I have to actually sum the entire uh, case statement, okay? Without that, I will not get a proper output. So I am at the end taking a sum of all of this, okay? And then I'll try to run this query. Let's see, execute. There you go. So you have customer ID, how many pizzas were delivered? At least one change, zero, no change, two. So out of three, three were no change. Out of three, three were at least one change, no change. Three, at least two change and one was no change. Okay. So there you have it. That is your output. Moving on to the next question. How many pizzas were delivered that had both, that had both exclusions and extras? exclusions and extras okay so this is very straightforward had both the exclusions and extras okay so i'm just going to copy the previous query and i'll make changes there okay it says how many uh, pizzas were delivered that had both exclusions and extras okay so what we are going to do is uh, going to keep the sum so in this case we don't need four columns we just need one additional column and the name of that additional column will be both exclusions and extras okay both exclusions and extras and here what i'm going to count is when exclusions not null instead of or i'll say and and extras is not null okay that's why that's where we will get uh, any order that had both exclusion and extras included okay and i think that's basically it let's see if this runs it should ideally run yeah there you go only this particular order id had both of it okay so there you go that's how you can do it you can also let's say rewrite this query in a different manner if you want uh, in uh, you know you can just probably remove the customer ID grouping here. 
and I think yeah I mean your choice however you want to run it but uh, doesn't make a difference okay all right so that's there you go if you don't want to showcase the okay uh -huh, this is what I was talking about if you don't want to showcase the customer ID and just want to showcase the number because it says how many pizzas were delivered that had both inclusions and exclusions and extras so if you just want the count you can remove the group by here and let's say you just run it sorry uh, not this you just take the sum not the count okay you just take the sum all right so there was only one pizza that had both one order that was delivered which has both exclusions and inclusions let me just keep it the way it was because this was much explanatory okay all right moving on to our last two questions for today question number nine what was the total volume of pizza's order for each hour of the day okay again interesting question where you can use the uh, you know date part function so you can just say date part okay i'm going to fetch the hour because i want each hour okay hour and where do i get it from order time and i'll name this as hours okay what else do i need total volume total volume is nothing but count of order id okay and let's name it plus is a volume i want it from customer orders and i want to group it by what i want to group it by date so i'll use date part again i cannot use uh, hours here okay i cannot group by the alias here because when this query actually runs uh, select comes after grouping okay so that's why you cannot use uh, hours here so i'll use the same uh, same line and query date part r okay and what we'll do is let's see let's run this first it's cute so our 11 13 18 19 21 23 pizza volumes are these all right you can validate it if you want so ours uh, let's take our uh, 18 18 says 3 where is 18 so 1 here so there you go so you have 1 18 in the 18 hour you have one order then you have second order and third order so you have three orders okay so makes sense so the query is correct moving on to the final query for the day i'll what i'll do is i'll after posting this video i'll also cover the next piece of the video so uh, towards the end of all the four videos i'll merge everything and put it together so in case you are listening to this particular audio in the larger video uh, don't mind it just keep on watching and just complete on complete the entire video okay so the final piece is what was the volume of orders for each day of the week so that means you want to find the weekday okay let me show you how pretty simple there is a function called date name in uh, SQL server if you are using some other editor please make sure that you are using the uh, corresponding query so instead of date part it could be let's say extract in postgres SQL so please make sure you are using that now chat GPT is available everything is available online please do a quick google search and you will find out what the exact alternative is i'll use weekday okay weekday from order time so weekday is a variable that i'm using here and i'll name this as weekdays okay then what i want is volume again order id as pizza volume from where do i want it from customer orders okay and what i'll do is i'll group it by 
this because I want for each weekday uh, one value each. Also, I'll group it by weekday order time. This is so that uh, it appears in a uh, in a in a in a moving fashion, right? and then you can order it by date part. Weekday order time. Okay, so we're grouping it and then we are just ordering it. Execute it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. These are your pizza volumes. There you go. So I hope this uh, video was helpful. I know it's a long video, but uh, skip the part that you don't find useful or you are already aware of. Jump right into answering the queries. And I'll cover the next pieces of this particular case study in the upcoming videos. So please stay tuned and watch the previous videos if you haven't watched it yet. If you are yet to subscribe to the video, uh, please go ahead and check out our channel. Check out the other videos that you find helpful. And if you enjoyed this particular video, please post a comment, like the video and share it with your colleagues in office or friends or family. And I'll see you with another video very shortly that's a continuation of this particular video thank you very much